3D event designer enables event professionals and venues to create extremely realistic 2D and 3D floor plans, buffet diagrams, and seating charts in minutes. And since it's completely web-based, you can create, edit, and view floor plans on any device, including laptops, tablets, and mobile devices. Today, I'll be taking you through the software from beginning to end. We're gonna start on our create a new floor plan page. You have three options here, either starting from scratch, choosing a template or opening a saved project. We'll go ahead and choose a template. And at the end here, we'll show you how to start from scratch or request that the 3D event designer team creates a floor plan for you. I'll search for a floor plan. And once I've opened up this floor plan, the first thing that I'll do is I'll click Save As to save it to my account. Now I'll go into the 3D walk mode to show you that this is what we call an ultra high definition room. One that looks identical to the real life venue. At the end, we'll go over the three different levels of 3D that we offer, which include standard definition, high definition, and ultra high definition. On the left hand side, we have our settings wheel. This is where you can easily switch between languages or the unit system. And where you can also save notes. So perhaps you wanted to save your timeline here. I'll go ahead and save that. The top right, we have our three different views. You have your 2D view, your 3D walk view, where you can walk around the room in 360 degrees at eye level, and your 3D global view, where you can view it from an aerial shot at any angle, and you can zoom in. A little further right, we have our view only mode icon which when you click opens up a new mobile friendly link where you can go ahead and copy this URL and send it to a client or a team member so they can easily view this floor plan in 2D and in 3D on their mobile device. Right below the view only mode icon, we have our share button where you can share by email and you can also click on project editable if you want the recipient to be able to edit your project. So from here, I wanna start adding in furniture and decor. First thing we'll do is we'll go to the Furnish tab and I'll start adding in tables and chairs. I'll go to the table wizard and select this 48 inch round with seven seats. I'll click on it and click where I want it in my floor plan and it'll automatically be there in 2D and in 3D. Now I can go into the 3D global view and zoom in on this table to edit it. Maybe I wanted to swap out these chairs for a different type of chair or the centerpiece for a different type of centerpiece. I'll go ahead and click on a chair, and on the right-hand side in the Properties menu, I can go to Swap Item and choose a different item. I'll go to this crossback chair and click Apply to All, and it changes all of them out. Now, if I wanted a different number of chairs at this table, the quickest way to swap this out is to go back into the 2D view, use our Select tool to draw a box around this grouping, then delete it and go back to the Table Wizard. This time I'll click 48 inch round with eight seats. From here, I can quickly autofill my floor plan by choosing the select button, drawing a box around the grouping and on the right hand side here, the autofill function will show up. I can define how many I want in rows and in columns and the spacing between each. We'll go with three rows, all spaced two feet apart, and we'll go with six columns, all spaced three feet apart and I'll click Generate Copies. As you can see, it auto-fills my floor plan. I can use the Select tool to draw a box around this entire grouping and move it to a different area. Let's go into the 3D global view. Let's say my client wanted to see what this would look like with a different color table linen. I can go ahead and click on the table linen, click on the color icon in the Properties menu, click apply and then click apply to all. And it'll change all the linens in my floor plan. Now let's go ahead and drag in a bar. I'll go to the furnished catalog. I'll go down to furniture, bars and counters, and I'll choose one that I like. I'll go ahead and place it in my floor plan and I can go ahead and click on the rotate button to rotate the item. Now, if I wanted to add in a wine bottle on top of this bar, I'll go back to the furnished catalog. I'll go to catering this time, go to beverages, click on a wine bottle. And before I place it on the bar, I need to know the height of the bar. So I'll select the bar and I'll see in the properties menu that it says it's three feet, nine inches. I'll select the wine bottle and I'll change its distance from floor to three feet, nine inches so that it sits on top of the bar. 
Uh, let's go over there in the 3D view. Maybe I want to add in a note on top of this bar so that in the 2D view, people know exactly what it is. I'll go to the Build tab, and under Annotation Tools, I can go ahead and select a note and click and draw to create a note. I can then type in what I want in the Properties menu. I can change the text size or color, and I can also change the notes color or opacity. Now this will also show up in the 3D view. You'll have a white round bubble that you can hover over and it'll tell you what that note is. Now maybe I wanted to add in a projector screen onto this wall and overlay my client's logo on it. I'll go into the 2D view and I'll search for a projector screen. As you'll see in the 3D view though, it's a little low on the wall. I want it to come from the ceiling. So I have two options. I can go into the 3D global view, select the item, and use the up and down arrows to move it up and down the wall. Or similar to what I did with the wine bottle, go in the 2D view, select it, and in the properties menu to the right, I can switch its distance from floor. Now I want to add in my client's logo and overlay it on top of the projector screen. I'll go into the 2D view. I'll go to the Build tab, and under Advanced Tools, I have my Upload Picture button. I'll click on that and place that into the floor plan. I'll go ahead and click in the Properties menu, Upload a New Image, and select an image from my computer. Now I need to change its dimensions and raise it off the floor so that it's directly in front of the projector screen. Let's place that in front of the projector screen now and take a look at it in the 3D view. There we go. Let's go ahead and add a seating chart now to my floor plan. Go back into the 2D view and I'll select a table. On the right-hand side in the properties menu, I can go ahead and label this. The three dots are what allows me to assign who's sitting at this table. I can either start typing their names or alternatively, I can go ahead and copy it from an email I've received and paste it in. You can get as detailed as you want with first and last name, entree of choice, or even food allergen. I'll go ahead and press apply, and in a minute I'll show you where that applies to, which is the inventory list. Now that I'm done with my floor plan, I wanna take some pictures of my floor plan so I can go ahead and save them to my computer or send them to a client. Over on the left-hand side, I'll go to the snapshots tab, and I can do a couple things. One is I can go ahead and create a project's icon. What this does is when I log into my floor plan account, I can search for floor plans either by text or by visual search. So I'll go into the 3D view and I'll take a picture of this view. I'll go ahead and click create. And now anytime I log into my account, I can see this image and know which floor plan it is of. I can also go down here to print or save floor plan and I'll go ahead and create images of the various views. Go ahead and start with the 3D walk view, click create. I can either download it to my computer or I can save it to the inventory list. And I'll go into the 3D global view and do the same thing. And I'll do one of the 2D view. From here I can click on the inventory list. And what gets auto-generated for me is a two-page document with notes at the top of my floor plan name, my email address, any notes I saved, the pictures that I saved of the 2D, the 3D global, and the 3D walk views, an itemized list of everything I've dragged in my workspace along with the quantity, and then that seating chart as well at the bottom. Now I can easily email, print, or PDF this and send it to clients. We'll go back to our floor plan. And before going into how to create a floor plan from scratch, let's go ahead and say you wanted to create multiple copies of this with different layouts. You can easily copy this floor plan by going to the top left and clicking Save As and making a copy. Now we'll go back to my projects page and this time click Start from Scratch.
Now, if I know the size and shape of my room, I can freehand draw it by going to the Build tab, selecting the Exterior Wall Tool, clicking on my starting point, and then I'll continue to click each time I change directions. Once I'm done drawing, I can go ahead and press the escape key to exit out of drawing mode. And my room will automatically be built again in standard definition with white walls and gray carpet. Now, if I have a floor plan of the venue space, I can actually upload it into 3D Event Designer to have a starting point and then trace over it. So I'll go ahead and select this room again to delete it. And this time I'll go to the upload tab and I'll choose a floor plan from my computer. I'll upload it into the system. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this one. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and lock it to the grid so it's not floating around. Now what I need to do is I need to scale this photo. So you'll see a 50 foot dimension right here. And I can go ahead and tell the system what this dimension is. I'll go ahead and click on room dimension scale and draw a line by clicking on my starting point and then clicking on my ending point. And I'll tell the system that this is 50 feet. From there, 3D Event Designer will automatically scale this photo properly. Now I have something to trace over. I'll go to the Build tab and choose my exterior wall tool again and start to trace over these walls. I'll draw through doors and windows as I'll add those later. If I don't draw directly on the walls, it's no problem. I can always edit that later. Again, each time I'm changing directions, I'm clicking my mouse. Once I'm done with drawing mode, I'll press the escape key. I can go back into the drawing mode to finish this wall. Now let's go into the 3D walk mode. And as you'll see again, we have a standard definition room. Now maybe we want to start adding in the doors and the windows. We'll go to the Furnish tab, and under Room Construction, we have doors and openings, and we'll choose a door we like. We'll click it on the wall, and it'll automatically snap to the wall. We'll go into the 3D walk mode, and there it is. Let's go ahead and add a window now as well. This time we'll go to Windows, choose a window we like, and it'll automatically snap to the wall again. You'll be able to see through the windows. So maybe you want to add an outdoor area. But first, if you want to go ahead and hide the floor plan that you uploaded at any time, you can go to the Upload tab, either press the I icon to hide it, or you can press the X icon to completely delete it. Let's add an outdoor space now. We'll go to the Build tab, and this time we'll use our outdoor drawing tool. Again, I'll click on my starting point, and I'll click each time I change directions. And once I'm done drawing, I'll press the escape key. I can go ahead and click on the floor. And on the properties menu, I can go ahead and select the floor icon, texture, and change it maybe to an outdoor material like grass. I'll then click on the ceiling tab and make sure that it's hidden. Let's go into the 3D global view and take a look at this. Now, if I wanted to add a tree out here in the grass area, I'll search for tree drag in this tree and let's go into the 3D walk mode and see how you can see through the window to the outside. Now from here, what I can do with the room is I can go ahead and start to change the color and the texture of the floors, the walls and the ceiling to make it a little bit more like my real life venue. So I'll go into the 2D view, I'll click on the floor and on the properties menu, I'll select the floor tab and select that texture icon. I can change it to a completely different texture, or maybe I just want to change it to a different carpet. Let's go ahead and select this carpet right here and click apply. As you'll see, it'll apply in the 2D and in the 3D view. I'll go back into the 2D view, click on the floor again, and this time I'll change the ceiling. Let's go ahead and click on that texture. And perhaps I wanted to change it to a little lighter of a ceiling. Now we'll go into the 3D global view to do the walls. 
I can either click on the floor and then go to the walls tab and change all the walls at once. Or let's go ahead and undo this. I can do walls individually. So let's go ahead and click on this wall right here. I'll go to texture or color. I can either choose the outer wall or the inner wall. Swap it to a different color. And it'll apply it just to that wall. Now I can easily duplicate this to another wall. Maybe I want to add it to these two walls by using what we call our dropper icon feature. I'll go ahead and select the wall that I'm wanting to add it to. I'll choose the dropper icon and then I'll select the material that I want to add to the wall. I'll do it again for this wall. I'll go ahead and click on this wall, click on the dropper icon, and then choose which material I want to change it to. Now, maybe for one of the walls, I want to go ahead and split it in half. So half of it is one color and texture, and the other half is a different color and texture. I'll go into the 2D view, and let's go ahead and select this wall. And on the right hand side here, we can go to multiple textures and then split materials. I can go ahead and choose where I want to split the wall and I can continue to split it multiple times if I'd like, or I can press the escape key to exit out. Now, if I click on the wall again, I can go ahead and now click on adjust material and choose which side I want to change. So let's go ahead and change this side. Maybe I wanted to change this to wood. I'll go to the wood material, find a wood I like, press apply and let's go into the 3D walk mode. Let's go ahead and add molding and baseboards now. I'll go to the 3D global view and we'll select this wall. On the right hand side under moldings and baseboards, we'll go ahead and add one. We can label it what it is. So let's start with a baseboard. I can change the height of the baseboard. I can change the thickness, how far out from the wall it will come. And I can also change its position top, middle, bottom, or custom. Since it's a baseboard, I'll leave it at bottom. Let's add one more now, and this time it'll be a molding. So I'll go ahead and change the type and label it molding. This time I'll go ahead and change the position to middle, and I'll go ahead and change the height. Let's go into the 3D walk mode and take a look. Now let's go ahead and add some columns in here. There's two ways to add columns. Let's go into the 2D view. You can either use one of our drawing tools. So for example, take an interior wall tool and draw a wall, select that wall and then change its thickness. Let's go into the 3D walk mode. As you can see, we now have a column. Or you can go to the furnish tab, go to room construction and then go to other room construction and choose from one of the columns we already have built. Now, as you continue to create different colors and textures on these walls, floors, and ceilings, and add in doors and windows, you're creating what we call a high definition room. And you can even make it even more high definition by using the upload picture tool for your windows. So instead of dragging in a window like I did with the furnish tab, we can go to the build tab, click on upload picture, Drag this picture in. Let's go ahead and upload a window view this time. Now I can resize this window view to any size I'd like, but let's take a look. So now I obviously need to change its distance from floor. So let's go into the 2D view and select it. And let's go ahead and make sure it's raised zero feet off the ground. And let's change the height to seven. And let's take a look. There we go, now we have a very realistic window view. Now to wrap up, we're gonna explain the difference between standard definition, high definition, and ultra high definition rooms, and how you can request them. So let's go back to our floor plan gallery. And as you're searching for a template, if you don't see yours, you can always click on request a floor plan. You can submit the venue name and the space that you're needing. And you can let us know if you're looking for a standard definition, high definition, or ultra high definition room, and we'll show you the process. For standard definition rooms, we can create them very quickly and put them into your account.
we go to our gallery tab, you'll notice that this page details out the difference between the three levels of 3D. Standard definition is what gets created by default. As you start to change the color and textures of the floors, walls, and ceilings, that's as you're creating it, you're making it high definition. Both of these are something that you're able to create yourself or you can have us create. Ultra high definition is where our team of modelers creates this room so that it looks identical to the real life space. We hope you enjoyed the demo of 3D Event Designer and we look forward to working with you.